Greetings everyone and welcome back to another installment in the Phone Archive, a series in which we look at strange, weird, obscure and unique phones from all around the globe for your entertainment. And in today's one, I'm going to be finally delivering a sequel to a video that I done many, many months ago. It could have almost been a year ago, I'm not too sure. November 2022 was when I looked at my first ever phone that I owned and used on a daily basis, back in 2005 I'd say. Now if you have not seen that video as of yet and are curious to see what that thing is capable of, I'll that should be enough room for a card. I'll card that video up there if you want to take a look at it. It's a very, very, very rambly video. And much like today's one, it is going to be a super rambly video. This is going to be a lot of story time, a lot of rambling about this certain device that I'm going to be taking a look at. So if that's your thing, grab yourself a drink and a snack and sit back and listen to me waffle on about a silly little mobile phone for the next 45 to 50 minutes or so. But if that's not your thing, I'll leave some timestamps in the description as well as the pinned comment so you can skip past general rambling. But this video is meant to be a retrospective, I guess, for a device that I have a lot of sentimental value attached to it, being that it's the second phone that I used ever in my my lifetime and boy oh boy have I just got stories to tell about this thing and how I got it and all that sort of great stuff so I guess with that intro out of the way I think it's time that I showed you all the Sagem My X6 this is not the first phone I ever used but it looks close enough to it though but this the My X6 and also I don't know if it's Sagem or Sagem I used to call it Sagem back in the day but Sagem kind of sounds right I'll alternate it in this video anyways this was released in 2003 early 2003. This had a 2 inch display with a resolution of 128 by 160 with 65k colors. It also had 2.3 megabytes of internal memory. A VGA camera couldn't take videos and that camera is protected by a little See? Ooh. It's got a little selfie mirror there. Do you remember those, folks? People that grew up with smartphones and stuff probably don't remember a selfie mirror on the back of your phone. So then you could point that at yourself and go, ah, yep, I'm going to be taking a selfie. And then boop done. You could see yourself in the reflection of that little shiny plastic that often gets scratched off and then you can't see anything, so it doesn't really matter. Why am I showing you this particular device? Because it's powered by O2. Um, it was powered by... hang on. It was powered by O2. Maybe this battery's dead. This battery's swollen. Does it look swollen? I'm pretty sure it's swollen. Yeah, this battery's dead. Whoops. Uh... That's okay, we'll just pretend that never happened. Why am I showing you this? Because I'm giving you an idea of what the hardware is going to look like with the Mi X7. So familiarize yourself with this. Four-way directional pad, two option buttons, call and call land, numeric keypad, nothing around the sides, nothing at the top, infrared port, that's gonna come in handy later, and a proprietary charging port at the back, selfie mirror, camera, that's just a bit of plastic and doesn't have any mechanisms attached to it, and a little switch to pop the back cover off, which I've just locked. There you go, like that, and you're in. Easy. This was charged, but the battery's swelling, so I'm not going to show you that for too much longer. But yes, I'm showing you this because I'm familiar... When did you switch on? Okay, this is what this is looking like. This was 2003, VGA camera. That's not too bad, to be honest. Nokia was using VGA cameras around that time as well, I believe. Man, those were the days, but... You know what? We're not here to look at this. See? O2 powered. Allow me to introduce to you the Sagem My X7. I believe I have to put the camera slightly up. I didn't even think of that. That didn't cross my mind. The reason why I'm going to be showing you the box and just around the phone first is because I want to give you a good idea of what it felt like for me back in 2006 using this and how excited I was. I haven't looked over this box since then. It has been quite a while. So here it is. The Sagem My X7 box. Telephone mobile. Ecran TFT. 65,536 colors, a battery, photo, CCD, VGA. And that is, we've got English, that side too. 65,536 colors, TFT screen, good stuff. CCD and VGA mobile camera. It's got a video recorder and video. Well, video. And uh, yeah, this is run. Whee! Look, it's running. The box is so cool though. Imagine walking into a shop back then, seeing this on the shelf, you'd be like, wow, what is this futuristic piece of technology that's on the shelf? It's just this Sagem thing. What's the Sagem, you say? They're French, I believe. They're French. I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're French. But yeah, that that's the device right there. We'll get to that very soon. And nothing really much around the box except the sticker on this box. This is my original box that I had. So that's 
my IMUI right there from the phone that I had back in those days. This was on Vodafone in Australia. That's what it says. And oh, made in Europe. Yeah, close enough. Large color screen and digital camera are the only two features that this thing has to offer. And digital tri-band phone and chrome aluminium as well. Or aluminum, doesn't matter. It says aluminium, so I'll say aluminium. Young me getting this box. It's like, whoa. And I had this on display too, and you can actually see all the dust. <laughs> from it being in storage for so many years. When I finally found this, when I was going through all my stuff, I was just like, wow, I remember that. I actually didn't have the phones with these. This is what I mean. We're going to be in for a whole heap of story time. So inside the box, there would be a charger, but that's currently plugged in. And um, I've pinched that and there's nothing else in here apart from that. See, Sage and branded adapter. And the end of the adapter looks a little something like this. It's got a couple of pins in there. It kind of looks like a connector from like a Sharp or NEC phone, but no, it's definitely for a Sage. I mean, this one's kind of broken too, but I've got a couple of these laying around, so that's all good. But let's kind of briefly go through the user manual. Look at these people excited. When people used to ride scooters, man, that weren't electric. Wow. And also good job on the on the compression of the image right there. You made these two look high quality, but that you just slapped on the right. <laughs> Customized for Vodafone Live, that you certainly were. And, um, oh, there's a document in here. You've just purchased a Sagem phone, my X7. We congratulate you. It is recommended that you read this handbook carefully in order to use your phone efficiently and in the best conditions. And you know what? We did. When I got this phone, we got it home. My mum would not let me switch this on and start using it because she said, it says in the guide that you need to charge it for several hours before using. It says it somewhere here, probably on the next page. Probably on the next page. Probably on the... Yeah, okay, you get the point of it. So I had to sit there and watch it charge for several hours before I was finally allowed to power it on. And then I was able to set it up and experience the wonders of this device. But this is a fairly, you know, simple guide. It tells you how to use the device, what it can do, all that sort of stuff. You can change the covers. Not that I've ever found extra covers for this, but you could if you did. As far as I know, they only made this in Chrome. I'll have to Google to see if they actually did, but I'm pretty sure they only made this in Chrome. Don't obstruct the antenna with your fingers. Were they predicting the iPhone 4 antenna gate thingamajiggy? Yeah, look, it's a fairly um, in-depth guide that tells you quite a lot about this device. I'm pretty sure I've read it once very briefly. I want to just also say this video is completely unstructured. I have no plan for this video. I was meant to do another review this week and that was going to be that Android calculator that you folks picked on stream. However, I got it. I started testing it and it broke and I've had to send it back. So I'll have to order another one. Sorry. It was really, really jank, but I'll sort it out soon. Releasing at the start of 2004, the Sagem my X7. And it was my X7. Well, this isn't my X7. It's um, actually someone else's, but uh, I own it now. And oh boy, is this thing a huge improvement over the previous phone I had, the Alcatel One Touch 332 that had a tiny little display, only up and down for directional, one option button, a call and call end on one other button, no camera, very basic, nothing to it. This, on the other hand, we've got a two inch display, 128 by 160, four megabytes of internal storage, a VG camera on the back that can record video. Infrared, if I haven't already mentioned that. Chrome aluminium futuristic style looking thing. The thing is though, I said this released in 2004. However, I did not get this until about June 2006. Now here is where my memory is going to get slightly fuzzy. Let's start talking about how I ended up with this device, why I ended up getting it, and all that sort of good stuff. If you haven't already skipped because of the rambling, now's the time where you might want to go, alrighty, alrighty, he's going to start rambling. Okay, grab yourself a drink and some Pringles. Pringles will be featured later in this video, I guarantee that. So, how did I get it? When did I get it? Why did I get it? I was in year eight of high school and it was June 2006, I think. I'm pretty sure it was 2006. Yeah, so I had my Alcatel One Touch in 2005 and this was 2006. And I was going on a holiday up to the Northern Territory. I'm in Melbourne, so, you know, that's a big jump for me. That was the first time I was ever leaving my state as well. I had family up there and they wanted me to go up there and I was going with another family member and a cousin and I was like I'd really love to take photos while I'm up there and mum said to me oh I'll buy you one of those disposable cameras that'll be fine you know all the kids in high school were getting phones with cameras and I was like I want a camera phone really badly I mean I wanted a camera phone with the Alcatel One Touch 332 but I couldn't do too much about it I kind of said what if I was to get a mobile phone a new one 
with a camera so that I can go on the holiday and take pictures of everything. And mum was like, you know what, that's actually a pretty good idea, let's do that. Back in the day, we used to get a thing called catalogs <laughs> in our letterbox. You'd get a whole bunch of catalogs shoved into the bottom of your letterbox and you'd be like, hmm, what are the specials this week? Oh, okay, so Pepsi Max cans are uh, $5 this week for a 24 pack. That's pretty good, because that was 2005 pricing, I think. You'd have, you know, electronic store magazines, phone store magazines, all that sort of stuff catalogs and one was from Vodafone and inside of it there was a budget range of devices and this was one of them. I liked the style of it and I thought it looked really nifty and I convinced my mum to purchase this for me for I believe, I could be wrong here, 150 Australian dollars for this but I think it was on the agreement that it's for my holiday, take as many photos as you can, take some videos if you can as well, now you'll be like one of the cool kids I suppose. So that's what happened, we went to a Vodafone store we grabbed one of these, bought it home, it sat on charge for four or five hours, and then I finally got to start playing with it, and man, I was in love with it. It was so much more advanced than the Alcatel. I got myself familiarized with this, I went to school with this, and was parading it around, and that's when I found out that the infrared port could be used to send stuff between other people. So someone had a Sony Ericsson J200i, I think, and he had some MIDI ringtones on it. We had the phones next to each other, and we'll send in stuff, and it's it was so cool that I was able to do that. But then kids had Bluetooth, and I was like, well, I don't have Bluetooth, I got infrared, isn't that better? They're like, no, Bluetooth's better. Oh, that sucks. But I was stuck with this, and you know what? It's still a cool-looking design. I wish I could find it, but I had a case that said X-rated on it. <laughs> it was this sock cover that has a big X on it, and said X-rated. I got it at the Royal Melbourne show in 2006. But don't worry, we're not finished with story time yet. Oh God, we have so much more to go. So, I took this on my holiday. I went up to Darwin, started taking photos of things, and I was like, loving it. You know, I was standing out in 35 degrees Celsius Northern Territory heat, taking photos of God knows what in the middle of nowhere, zooming in with digital zoom going, yep, I think I took a photo of that. That was pretty cool. Until one fateful day. Oh boy, one fateful day. Ah, okay. So, Northern Territory's hot, yeah? It's pretty hot. A family member says to me, let's go on the boat today. And I went, man, I've never been on a boat. Let's do it. Let's go on a boat. Yeah, it was this little, uh, this little, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know about boats. It was a boat. And we were going fishing. I had shorts on. And these particular shorts, these godforsaken shorts that I decided to wear didn't have regular pockets to the sides right near your thighs. It had pockets down the bottom of the shorts. And where was I going to put this? In one of those pockets right down at the bottom of the shorts. So we were driving there and everything. I remember the drive there. We got out and I remember seeing the boat and the stupid idiot uncle of mine decided that it would be fun to park the boat in like an area where there was no proper steps to get onto the boat. Instead, you had to scurry through the water and then climb onto it. So I just went okie dokie. I scurried through the water that was, you know, knee deep and uh, we kind of went a little bit further, got onto the boat and everything was fine. And then I went, my phone my phone. I pulled it out and it was dead. It was dead. And I opened that back cover and it was just, <laughs> it was dead. And I was so, so upset on that boat ride. I remember that fishing trip was absolutely awful because I was so upset that this device that I literally only had for, a, I think about two weeks at that point in time before I went on that holiday, I was devastated. My uncles were like, you know, you can just clean it and it'll work again. I'm like, no, it's not. It's dead. And I'm not gonna... And I was, I was going to be in Darwin for another like six or seven days and there was nothing I could do. So that trip was just a terrible trip. All the photos that I was taking on this device, well, they were gone. See you later. No more. Bye-bye. Gone. It was lovely photos that I took. Actually, I really don't remember any of the photos that I did take while I was up there. So that doesn't really matter. I was absolutely devastated that that had happened. That's the only time in my life that I've destroyed a device of my own. Long story short about the holiday, I got back home. Mum knew about it because I'd rang her from up at whoop de doo Was it called whoop de doo No, I don't remember where it was called in Darwin. It was called something do. I swear there was nothing but like a single letterbox in a house in this huge area of just nothingness. So, mum takes me up to Vodafone, and we go up there, and we speak to the same person who sold us the original unit, and we said that I accidentally gave it to somebody, and they threw it in the water, and they destroyed it. It wasn't my fault, it was somebody else's fault. 
And Vodafone kind of felt sorry for me. They took pity on mum's stupid story and decided, we're gonna feel sorry for this kid. So they said, we'll sell you another one at $100. And I was doing odd jobs for a friend at the time, so I said, I can get some of that money and pay for it back again. So we agreed to getting it for $99, and I got the second Sage and My X7. Then I used it for about a year or so and babied the hell out of it. I didn't drop it, I didn't scratch it, I didn't do anything because it was in that sock case the whole entire time because I didn't want another mistake like that happening again. Years later, I did find the original device that was submerged in salt water and it was gone. There was nothing that I could salvage from it and I don't know what I did with it. But the second one that I had, I ended up selling to a friend and I don't know what they did with it. Very, very convoluted history this has. And another thing as well, the first ever date that I went on, I had this device and um, I was able to receive a couple of photos via the infrared port and um god that's gonna be taken out of context no it was like little emoticons and stuff little animated things that was it man i was we were young it definitely held a lot of uh memories for me what happened after this one well i got a new phone and this was put to the side the salt water one just stayed to the side and the other one well that was just sitting in a drawer until i sold it on and that was it i didn't have any and then all these years later i find the box and go i need to find one and where do i find one e-waste of course i'd find it e-waste but i didn't just find one. Oh no that that'd be too easy no, i was lucky to find <laughs> three of the bastards no none of these are my original ones none of them these are all from e-waste i think i actually got one before i found the box and then once i found the box then i went through these and stuff and i made a good one out of them actually which cover looks good they all look terrible all right fair enough then so i've got two backups if this one doesn't work but this one should work now that i've been rambling for the last 20 minutes on how i got this phone the story behind it what it did for me and all that sort of stuff i think you get a good idea of what's going on hopefully if you don't i'm sorry that was a convoluted ramble that i just did to you all you've been staring at this for so long now let's have a look around this the earpiece is v I love that. I always thought this was really futuristic. The Vodafone logo slapped on there. Sagem, two inch screen, 128 by 160. All the keys, which there's these edges that go along the keys that give it that futuristic look. Taking it in, it's just such a futuristic looking cool design. I do remember the keys being kind of okay to type on, but it was these keys at the bottom that were a pain in the ass because they were so bunched together. Like look how tiny eight is, for example, whereas two is like almost double the size of it. So two is easy to press but eight you're sort of pressing zero and all that sort of stuff around it so it's a little bit odd the d-pad was pretty good for the most part i do remember pressing two directions at the same time a lot and this was also the first phone that i was able to access the web on when a friend told me you can go on the internet with this thing and i was like really could you? And he had a, I think he had a Motorola V360 at the time. And yeah, we opened up the browser on this WAP and um, I was able to download some images, which I still have to this day. They're all skateboarding logos and stuff. But yes, this is the first device that I used to access Google. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's, that's, now that's saying something, isn't it? Otherwise the entire thing's made of plastic. We've got the infrared port at the side there, which works perfectly fine. I have tested it. I'll talk about that very soon. And God, I'm talking about a lot of things in this video. I'm so sorry. I've got a little camera lens like that just a little camera lens cover slides back and forward and then you've got the chrome selfie mirror there can you see the camera in the reflection no because there's probably a thumbprint in the way and at the bottom is just the usual charging port nothing else and if i just pop that open see there's the uh camera lens cover there it literally does nothing it's just a piece of plastic. The camera actually tells you if it's dark or not. So if it's dark, it'll say, open the camera lens cover. And that's how that works. But yeah, nothing sophisticated like later Nokia mobiles where they actually had a trigger switch in them. This was just a fairly basic, simple mechanism. That is the guts right there, the camera, which actually has a scratch on the lens, but the photo has turned out all right. So that's not an issue there. The 1050 milliamp hour battery that kind of looks like a Nokia battery, kind of, but it's actually not. And a Nokia Bell 5C battery will not fit or work with this because the contact are swapped around there. There's a Vodafone SIM card in there. This is obviously 2G only, so it can't do too much there. The thing that you could do with this was actually replace the covers, much like Nokia devices of the time. Do you know how many phone stores I went to to try and find a cover for this? Because I thought I could get another cover for this and make it look cool. No, I couldn't. No one sold them. Everyone had Nokia ones, but no Sagem ones. What the hell's a Sagem? And that's basically the innards of it. I guess while I'm here, we may as well just quickly take it apart because there's not too much to it. The construction of it is very much like an 
original Nokia. Actually, why am I taking this one apart? I'll take one of the other ones apart, because this one works. Let's not jeopardize the situation by taking one apart that works. Did that make sense? The keypad looks a little something like this. I also kind of remember me fiddling around with the keypad as it is like this for some reason. I think it was with the damaged one, but oh God, that's filthy. Oh, it's going to hit the half an hour mark before I even switch on the device. <laughs> I'm doing this video completely backwards. Um, as I said, there's no structure to this whatsoever. It's just a last minute thing. It was on my to-do list. I wanted to do it. I can't believe it's been a year since I took a look at the uh, OneTouch 332. Man, that's that's crazy. Uh, time is flying. I don't know where the time is going. All right, so taking six T6 screws out, you can basically just lift everything away and it falls apart. Don't worry about that. There's the LCD on its own little assembly thingamajiggy. And then this comes off, and then you lift this off, and that's it. There's the speaker at the top there, a coin-style vibration motor just there, the battery contacts, looking a little something like that, microphone down the bottom, SIM slot. Oh, we can take the shielding off. There's a little infrared port there. So there's two little blobs that go beep, 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 something like that. I actually don't know what's under this. I've never, ever checked. I mean, I wouldn't have had a neat... Whoa, wow. Look at this sophisticated technology, sophisticated technology. There's a module just there. I'll have to Google this and let you know what that is because I've got no idea. We also have a, another module just there, which... Is that an AM... Hang on, is that AMD? Whoa, this is AMD powered. <laughs> I never knew that. Uh, I knew AMD had mobile chipsets back in the day, but I didn't know that the Sage of My X7 had AMD in it, man. That's crazy. I wonder what that is. Actually, I'm going to look it up now. Let's look it up. What's, what, what is this crazy? It's probably a graphics accelerator, actually, thinking of it. It also has 27 zeros in it. No, it's six. Googling that comes up with nothing related to this. So I have no idea what that is then. Then we have a Sagem chip just there. Not too sure what that could possibly be. Then we also have another module just there, which is a no idea what you are. Is that Texas Instruments, I think? If I'm seeing that correctly, possibly. Then we also have a couple of other modules up there, as well as another module just there like so. Wouldn't it be hilarious if there was like MediaTek, Texas Instruments, Sagem, AMD and then like something else in there. That would be quite amusing actually. That's the guts of this thing right there. Uh, so that's given me a lot of things that I'll have to look up. Well, it was easy to put back together. I say that. Uh, we've only been filming for 50 minutes. That's back together as well. I'll just lock the switch. And now it's finally time to power this thing on and show you all the power of the Sage and My X7. Here we go. This might bring back memories. Oh, did that bring back memories for anyone? And the, the boot logo as well. Three FPS. Wait. It asks me how I am as well. I'm doing very well, thank you very much, Sage. How are you doing? It doesn't answer me. Is it the valid date? Yes, it is. Is it the valid time? Close enough. And we're completed. And that's it. We've booted up. How easy, simple is that? It's flashing at the top there because I don't have reception. The SIM card's dead anyways. But here we go, the Sage and my X7. Now, up until this point of reviewing this, the only things that I've done is taken photos, deleted any personal information that's on this, and that's about it. I haven't really tried to play around with anything else because I've wanted to leave the reactions to finding out all the stuff about this that have been buried in my brain for many, many years ago. I want to just, I want to show you all my reaction to it. And there's also a screensaver too, by the way. I remember screensavers. Keys? No, oh, can I type in that many? Mate, I can't even type in my own phone number. Oh no, okay, no we can. Yeah, those keys are just very, very oddball, being so close together. And I do remember always accidentally pressing this and going, oh, that's the browser. I didn't want to open the browser and it says server not responding, but it would have came up. Oh no, there it is there. That's what it looked like. And that's how my friend told me, go to URL, type in Google and I'd press okay. And then that's when I'd see Google on this. And it quickly ate up my credit that I had on this. And uh, mum was pretty pissed off that I had wasted my $20 prepaid recharge on downloading like four JPEGs from the internet. Well done me. But yeah, this is fairly um, linger timer. Do you have to let it linger? Do you have to? Do you have to? Do you have to let it linger? Um, cookies. Mmm, cookies. What bookmarks did they have? Yeah, Vodafone Live and all that sort of stuff. Vodafone Live Australia, which wouldn't be able to see it, but that's as close as you're going to get to the browser on this. But you can't change that key. I'm fairly sure of it. We'll check through settings anyways. The camera. We'll come back to the camera. To lock the keypad, you press star, then option, and then star. Okay. 
and that's how you unlock it. So going into the menu, we've got games, Vodafone Live, applications, messages, camera, my items, organizer, contacts, settings. That's it. It's not a lot, but I liked it. Also, the red theme as well. I really, really loved that from Vodafone. A lot of earlier Vodafone branded devices used a red theme, and now they've collected a lot of phones over the years. Stuff like this has a red theme to it. This is such an oddball device, by the way, but this was a sophisticated Alcatel. This actually has a, um, a Doom clone on it, by the way. Should show you all that one day. The battery in this, I know, is pretty terrible, so we might have to use life support. I'll see how we go for now, but I'm at three bars. Let's go with games first. Wow. Oh, we've got plenty of games, actually. Let's try some Java games, man. Bubble Trouble, Vibrate, yes. Security, Untrusted, that's good. What's the info? 74 kilobytes this was. All right, well, let's try it. Let's see what this is. Wow. I remember the Java games on mine, I think were a puzzle one and that's it, I think. Actually, I'll boot up one of these ones to check. But this is Bubble Trouble. Is that not the start key? Then what's the start key? Five is the start key, okay. Oh, I remember this, the little froggo dude, dude. Yeah, the froggo guy. Froggo, the froggo's not a guy. And then th this is what I assume to be like Tetris? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or Columns. Is it Columns on um, Sega? Ah, that's how you press it. Oh, no, 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 I didn't mean to do that. Uh, yeah, okay, well, this is, this is kind of fun. You know, this is pretty, you know, self-explanatory. You just match up the balls and, uh, yep, and that's how you, clear the balls. <laughs> I'm not good at explaining this uh, stuff. Uh, you, you clear the, um, the, the, you make shapes with balls. This is not helping. Uh, <laughs> just ignore me. All right, so 2003. Wow, amazing. Download more at Vodafone Live. I do remember the game that was on mine that came up with that. Oh, uh, Gulo's Tale. That was the one on mine. Gulo's Tale. This is the default one. Actually, Bubble Trouble and Gulo's Tale might be the default ones that I don't remember. I don't remember playing them too much, though. Yes, kind of. Does this look familiar? Oh, Jesus, what's that? That looks like a rejected Pokemon that they probably used in, like, the ninth generation. Jesus, this music's fucking horrendous. Someone just literally dicked around in a Macintosh and just went, Listen, do you remember me? A thousand years ago, you robbed me of my powers and weakened the plants of the rainforest by eating all my fruit off. Oh, fuck this music. Okay, yes, good. Oh, I have to listen to this story. Okay, great. All right, well, blah, 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 blah. yep. Okay, great. Good. Let's, let's see what this game's like. Oh, hello. Oh, yeah, this goofy looking fella. Yes, I do remember this game now. Uh, I barely played it. I mean, it runs pretty smooth. Also, is it flickering? Or is it just the poor resolution of this display being 128 by 160? Let's see if I can fix that. Hang on. Did that fix it? I don't know if that did or not. It might be flashing. That's not good. Can I jump on them? Yep. And I collect fruits. See, this is this is fun. Not much to it though, but you know, it's it's a, it's a game. So that's Gulo's Tale, which I'm pretty sure now, thinking of it, it was on my original one. Yes, we get it. Download more at Vodafone Life. That doesn't exist anymore. Oh, how did I miss Destroy All Humans? Man, Destroy All Humans. I remember when that came out. English. Let's choose English. Oh, Jesus. Okay. All right. Well, how does it look? Play. Okay. Okay. Safe to say that's not really what I was expecting too much of, uh... Oh, hello. What am I supposed to do? I guess I'm supposed to destroy humans. Can I get in the spaceship and just fly around, just, you know, break things? Teleport me. Take me to your leader. I am my own leader. Yeah, you can switch thingamajiggy, my bobs. Yeah, so, uh, we want to switch to that. There we go. Now I've become a human, and now I can, uh go do human stuff. I mean, this is pretty sophisticated, I guess, for back then. It's like an NES game, you know, on the go sort of thing. God, the display flickering is terrible. How do I fix this? I may have possibly, have I fixed it? I think that may have fixed it. I'm sorry that the, uh, the quality for this is not good. Let me quickly try Juiced. I might have to put the brightness down, actually. Maybe that will help it. I was going to put the backlight down, but it's not flickering now. So it just seems to be only be in games, so it might be all right. Does anyone remember what happened with Juiced? How, I think it was um, not THQ, I think. It was some other company that was making it. They were like 90% through, and they scrapped it, and then THQ like rebranded it and stuff. It was a weird thing. All this music is absolutely horrendous. 
I should have sent this a Java game via infrared to see if it worked. Might do that. So arcade, street race, hot hatch. Oh geez, okay. Mid-sized sports. We don't have any uh, brand name cars, so we just have to pick through the, oh, five cars. Hot hatch will do. Route one or route one, dry. Let's hear the, the noise of thunder. Uh, oh boy. Oh, well, you can kind of like drift. Oh my God, you can drift, bro. Wee! Where's where's the night? Oh shit! There's the nitrous button. God! Th Someone just licking a piano. I'm like a bumper car. It just went boop off the walls. That's good. I remember there was um a 3D version of Juiced actually for I think Sony Ericsson. Um, possibly. Warwick Games, quickly. I'm gonna see if I can actually get a Java game installed onto this. This is now the point where I bring into the equation of how exactly did I get the photos and videos off of this device to be able to show in this video later on. Uh -huh. I had the trusty help of the OG foldable. <laughs> this is the Nokia E90 that I actually got from Cashies. I was the first one that seen it and uh, well it was mine. This is absolutely amazing but it's business on the front, party on the inside. Look at that go. That You got a full QWERTY keyboard and it's just this is a foldable done right you know what I mean? <laughs> It's just, it's so cool that you could just do that. But this was the only Nokia device that I could think of that was more modern that had both infrared and Bluetooth. I decided that this was a good fit for transferring stuff. So what I would do is take photos with this, infrared to there, then I'd Bluetooth to my PC, and that's how we do it. And then if I want to send stuff, then I'd Bluetooth to this, then infrared to that. That's how it worked. I'll splice in a video of how infrared works between these two devices to give you all a little bit of a uh, tutorial and lesson for the day of how infrared worked transferring data back in the day, if you didn't know how that worked. Here it is. So without Bluetooth, this is called infrared. When you have an infrared port on this device and an infrared port on this device, you hold them close together and it starts to send. Oh, that's rejected. Okay, well that's what happens because it's obviously not lined up. You have to line them up correctly. So you want to do that. And then you want to do this. Okay, and I should get the little infrared icon. There we go. So now the infrared icon's going, transfer's going. So that, that port right there is communicating with that port. I don't know how far they're supposed to be apart, but I just remember you had to be very, very close for infrared to work. Um, I don't think the beam could be like one over here and one over the other side of the room. It's very, very primitive. But I have to do this with every single photo and video that I took with this device uh, because there's no USB connection or anything. It just, everything has to, yeah, this is good. <laughs> But wait, uh, it's a 113 kilobyte file I think I'm transferring, and it takes roughly, I don't know, three to four minutes, give or take. Nope. Actually, that was uh, a lot less than I expected, actually. I think when I go solid, that means it's receiving. Okay, that means it's receiving. So it's receiving the file from there. So it's, you know. I didn't realize that you can use a can of Pringles as a tripod. That's pretty cool. I should do this more often. I've got one more video to do, and then that is all of the videos that I've done with uh, with this. And then I have to send all the photos too. I don't know if I can send them all at once or if I have to do one by one. Wait for it to go solid. Come on, go solid. And maybe it's not lined up correctly. There we go. It's lined up. There we go. It's working. Next time I do a job lot, I'll just use a can of Pringles. I don't know why I craved a can of Pringles. I haven't had them in so long. And I was just like, oh, man, I'll, I'll go grab some Pringles today while I'm out. And I did, and uh, I'm about to eat them. But there you go, that's done. Good. Now, let's send a photo. Oh, that's back. You know, it's very difficult to use a phone upside down, but uh, sure thing. See, there's Visualize too, by the way. I'll show you that later on. But yes, Visualize. That's the froggos there. So send by IRDA. Let that do its thing. And that should be how that works. It's fairly fast, pictures, because they're only like 10 kilobytes each. Maybe a little bit more. See? That's pretty fast for infrared, you know what I mean? That's pretty good. Alright, I'm going to shut up now and um, continue on. And that's basically the explanation of how infrared works. A very uh, terrible explanation of how it works, but hey, Pringles can as a tripod. That's a first. I now have Doom RPG that I'm searching for in my archives. 
and we're going to see if we can install it onto here. Man, how cool it would have been to use one of these devices back in the day. I've got a lot of these communicator devices. I'd love to maybe take a look at them one day. Also, Senski is the name of this device. No idea. Yeah, maybe one day I'll take a look at one of these. Well, I installed Doom RPG, so, you know, it was reasonable. I've installed it on this, but yeah, I can't actually send it uh, from... No, I've got a way of sending it. Hold up a second. I'm an idiot. S'mores is smart, see? Send via infrared okay now this is the point where we then come to this device that i've already showed you just previously but i'm going to do it again just in case connectivity infrared on we go and all you got to do is just line up the two then you send oh it's a protected object oh okay well i'm not going to get too far with it but look how cool this thing is though man Whoa. sophisticated technology right here i fixed the flickering problem i think how cool is that? This deserves its own video in itself, but uh, yeah, this is a really cool thing, isn't it? Safe to say, we're not going to be playing Doom RPG, but it was worth a shot. Let me quickly boot up another one. Because I just want to see what games are the default ones. I'm pretty sure Bubble Trouble and uh, Goo Someone, Gulo's Tale. I don't remember. Bubble Trouble and Gulo's Tail were the default ones. There you go. We'll solve that one. Back to this then. We've still got quite a long way left, but just quickly in games, um, if I go to more games, that'll connect me to Vodafone Live. That's not going to work anymore. Then if I go to settings, connection, is Optus? Is this unlocked? This is probably unlocked. Whoa. Memory says 1,881 kilobytes with 5% Java, 0% MMS, 1% context, 22% video, 20% pictures, 9% music, 0% diary, 5%, yeah, because I've got the pictures and videos that I took on this device. But that's games. And then Vodafone Live we've kind of been through. Applications, we've got services. Oh my God, look at all this. Vodafone, free stuff, my account, tones and pics, entertainment, chat and games. This was back when social media really wasn't a thing and you'd get your fun stuff by paying like $5 for for some tones of text to song name. Enter song name. 2006, 2006 songs, 2006. Was Panic at the Disco 2006? Oh, no, it wasn't. Totally wasn't. No. Oh, yes, it was. Yeah, it was. Oh, I don't want to type in I write sins. I chime in with a haven't you people ever heard of. I write. Yeah, typing is not the best on this. But you know what? It kind of is coming back to me. Because it's fairly responsive for the most part, anyways. Seven doesn't work. What? How does seven not work? Oh, well, seven doesn't work. Oh, no, because I'm, I'm already at the end. All right. And then it sends the request and nothing happens. Yeah, I remember that sort of stuff. All those weirdo services that were for back then. Wow. Find and seek. I wonder what that would be. Uh, service not available. Try again later. To do? To do menu. Create to do. Written. Vocal. Ooh, vocal. Record. Make sure you do this video properly, s'mores. All right, let's listen to that back. Never mind, it doesn't matter. Yeah, well, this is just a reminder thing, but I think there's a voice recorder on here. Pretty sure there is. Calculator. Very basic calculator. I always used to call that the guitar pick because it looked like a guitar pick. <laughs> two plus two is uh, four minus one. That's three quick maths. Pretty easy. Converter. Oh, hello. This could be helpful. Currency one, Australian, and currency two is R-I-N. You know, you folks, when you donate to me on live streams, I'm so sorry when I don't know the currencies, when people donate in alien money, I'm just like, oh, okay, I don't know what that is. I'm so sorry. I'm not up to date. So if I was to do uh, USD, for example, then exchange rate, you'd then have to change that. And then you'd then go to currency and then you would, I'm confused already. 25 Australian equals 72. Dollars and fifty USD. That doesn't make sense. It's safe to say you'd have to update that. But anywho, alarm is gonna scream at you. Oh boy, ringtones. I remember the ringtones. Oh, there's some weird ones on here. Timer, settings, memory and connection. Once again, messages. Looks. Yeah, I remember this. The messages menu looking a little something like this. That brings back a lot of memories. But we're kind of at the camera. So photo camera. See, nothing's happening. Cause look, dark picture. Please check that lens cap is open. And then. There it is. Not that you can see anything. Oh, there you go. I was, sorry, I was just taking some time. But this is a camera from 2004. There's not much you can do here. You can take 
photo, and that's it. Videos looks like this. Now there is actually settings for the camera, but it's hidden in settings. So if you go down to settings, then go to camera, you'll see that the photo format is high resolution. That's what I took all the photos at. Video size restriction is none, but you can have it if you wanted to. Video quality was set to high quality. But if you wanted, I think 15 seconds of video, you set it to long duration. Otherwise high quality is 10 seconds of video that you get before it goes, nope, that's it. Video sound, record sound, of course we do. Yep. And that's about it within settings. Settings. For an old device like this, taking a photo is a bit advanced. Not like the new devices today where we press one button, done, that's it, saved. This was a little uh, slower. So if you go to take a photo, okay, easy. Now you save it. Now it has to run an <laughs> analysis thing. This is just one photo, okay? Now you can do options if you wanted to. Oh, there's an editor. Oh, you can do, oh, I don't remember doing any of this. Add frames to the mouse mat. Yeah, okay, let's to film Joker, oh, what? Okay, with a mouse mat. Yeah, okay, that, that's, that's pretty fair. I should have actually done some of these. Contrast, sharpen, blur. Oh, let's see what blur looks like. Well, it's still blurry. <laughs> It's still blurry. That's kind of cool. I didn't realize that um, this was here. I think what you want to see is the photos as they are taken from this device. I'm going to splice in the photos and videos that I took with this device in for you all. But first, I'm going to show you a video taken while I was outside, just touching on the whole taking photos, but also taking videos, which I'll let myself explain in this quick video. You know, I've been doing this camera test for probably the last 45 minutes or so because I can only take one photo at a time and then it has to do an analyst thing. Then I do a video that I can only do for six or seven seconds and I have to wait for it to compress. So I can film and I have to wait, I have to wait, give it some time. Then when it's all good again, then I can record for another five or six seconds and then I have to wait for it to compress again. Oh man, I don't remember it being this bad back when I owned it. I think just having a camera on this thing was just, you know, more than enough. We're almost done though. Look, see, it's almost there. Look, hang on, hold up. A couple more pixel lines to go and we're done. Yay. Okay, that was literally just doing the froggos. I now have to do everything else. Oh, hell yeah, let's record in like seven frames. Of, I don't know. It was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll just see if it works. Oh boy, testing video recording on the Sega My X7, and I've only got like five seconds before it stops. Here's all the flowers. Also, this is in high quality as well, uh, which means that I should get more than like, I don't know, a couple of seconds. Uh, yep, okay, that's this one. Super quick. Okay, these fellas, uh, brick wall, uh, Stuart and stuff, lemon tree, lemon tree, lemons. See, look, okay, that's another video done. My god, I don't have enough time. Far away aircon with, I can't zoom in. All right, well, there you go. That's the camera test for the Sagem, Sagem, my X7. Hope you enjoyed all 20 seconds of it. That took me half an hour. And what did you think of that? From this thing, 2004, those photos, given the context of this device, they actually weren't too bad at all. I don't remember them being that good, to be fairly honest. It's definitely a VGA camera, but looking at the lemon tree photo, for example, like here it is, that looks really good. For this thing anyways, it looks really, really good. It's kind of vibrant as well. The digital zoom, on the other hand, is a little bit uh, to be desired, but you know, it works. And then trying to take a selfie of me kind of looking a little something like that. My face is looking a little red there, but alrighty. That's the quality of photos on this. But videos, oh my god. 45 minutes I was outside doing the camera test because each time I take a photo, I'd have to wait for that analysis thing, then it'd be okay. Then with videos, I'd take the video, 10 seconds, then I'd have to wait for it to compress. That would take a good two or three minutes, maybe a little longer. And then I was finally able to have a saved video on this device. So yeah, picture wise, you know, they look pretty good on this display. I mean, being 
being a low resolution display and the images being 640 by 480 I mean it looks pretty good right there that would make for a good wallpaper actually then I can go to the editor actually add frame wood TV oh TV yeah there we go so there's film Joker love mirror stamp theater TV wood fair enough then add mark Ooh. swear words <laughs> They're called profanities, my friend. Yeah, okay. Grayscale, negative, emboss, adjustment. What's the adjustment? I don't know what it adjusted, but alrighty. Solarize. Oh, Jesus, okay. Properties was a 57 kilobyte JPEG image on there. And then I can send that via MMS or infrared if I wanted to. But I just think it's so bizarre that it comes up with an analysis thing for a photo. Like it's futuristic or something. Sure thing, Sagem. Sure thing. And visualize as well, by the way, for the images. Visualize. It's such a, as I said, futuristic sounding. Videos, on the other hand, 128 by 96. At best, we got 9.69 frames a second with 262 kilobits per second for the bit rate. And uh, how do they look? Well, It looks good on the display, but you've already seen it during the uh, camera test and it doesn't look that good at all. But the fact it was able to take video, that's the main part. It can take video. It was very painful to do that 40 second camera test, but I did it for you all. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed that. There's not much else you can really do within the video options, to be honest. You can't edit them or anything. You can just see that it's a 3GP file, 227 kilobytes it was. Yeah, that's videos. Memory, once again, shows most of it being taken up by videos and photos. But that's the sort of the multimedia aspects of this thing, which honestly, going from a device that had basically nothing to this was a huge upgrade for me. Organizer, we've just got calendar and that's really it, to be fairly honest. Don't really need to see much in there. Contacts is just basic contacts. Settings, on the other hand, is where things get slightly interesting. Because here are the ringtones. Oh boy, I do remember that I did check the ringtones to make sure they're all on here. Yes, they are. Some of these have been put on here, but most of these are default. Now, I'm going to just go through these and play them and see if I can remember which ones are default and which ones are not default. So, the first one. That was not a default one, by the way. That sounds like someone um, deep throating the phone. <laughs> no. Uh, that sounded like pure horror. B. Love how fades in, by the way. Oh, that's familiar. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is default. That wasn't my ringtone though. What file format is DM? But got some Green Day on here. This this was default. Big Ben, which um Yep. Bird. Blink. Oh, Blink-182. Yep. Someone bought these, I reckon. Oh, boat horn. Um. <laughs> yep. I use this as my alarm. I remember now. I use that for my alarm tone to uh, wake me up. Yep, memories of uh, having to go to school to that. Self-explanatory. It doesn't end. That's default. Oh, Jesus. Yep. Let's see if it attracts Ripley. I don't think Ripley cares. Nah, this wasn't my ringtone. Oh, 
Oh, if you're also wondering, I tried to put BFG Division on here, but it couldn't play MP3s. I cut down a tiny bit of BFG Division that was like 200 kilobytes as an MP3 at like 100 kilobits a second. Put it on here, and nah, couldn't play it. Tried it in M4A as well, just to see. Nah, AAC, no. I could have done it in AMR format, but it was 20 kilobytes and sounded like absolute garbage. So, safe to say, the speaker test wasn't going to happen on this. Oh, it finally finished. Oh, because it, <laughs> it gave up. D? It sounds familiar, but I can't tell because it's so compressed. Oh, I remember this. I think this was my ringtone at one point. Yeah. Pretty sure it was. Oh, yep, the dog. Why you'd want to set that as a ringtone? I don't know. Dring. Oh, D-Ring. Yes. That's fun, I guess. Ah! Now, I can only play that once because um, that's kind of copyrighted. But yes, that is Vincent Price's laugh from Michael Jackson's Thriller. That's a default one that's on here. If I remember correctly, that was the default ringtone for this when I first set it up. Flute. Basic. Foxtrot. Foxtrot. Uniform. Charlie. Kilo. If you didn't get the uh, words there, yeah. Frog. Oh, this. Did I have this as a ringtone? Did I have this as a ringtone? I don't remember, but it's it's very familiar. Funky Pop. This sounds familiar. It also sounds horrendous. Oh. <laughs> oh, I forgot this existed. Yep, that exists. Oh no, this was the default one. Can't play much of that, obviously, due to copyright. That's outcast there. But yes, that was the default ringtone. Now I remember. This is a pizza party. We're going to Ibiza. Whoa. Back to the island. Is that the song? I don't remember. This is terrible. Yeah, you like jazz? Greetings and welcome to another LGR thing. I mean, it's pretty close to it. Love JJ LJJ. Uh, yeah, okay. Mineral? Oh, yeah, that's familiar. Yeah, that's familiar. Mozart. Okay, that's good. News. This. I definitely use this for something. That sounds funky. Oh, man. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oriental? Oriental? Okay. Pop. It's not really pop. It's more like sort of soft rock. Relaxed soul. You can hear that there's like multiple sounds going on at the same time, right? How is this acceptable? Sure. Mm. 
lot of animal sounds on this, because why not? It's silent. What do you expect? In school, everyone had some sort of Nirvana song on their phone, and now people wear Nirvana merchandise and don't even know the band. That's funny. Sonar. T. Oh, jeez. Yup, yep. Ow. Secretly, that's the tone that rings inside of my head when I'm trying to think. Yep. Oh. <laughs> oh, God, yep. That's so atrocious. Trust. What? 287 Elizabeth, level 10. 287 Elizabeth? I think that's an address in the city. Ooh, Vodafone. And that's it. Now, if I go to SMS, I'm pretty sure, yeah, all the SMS sounds are exactly what we've been through. All of the sounds are just all for one. So SMS, you could have any of those ringtones, four if you wanted to. Same with alarm and stuff. I'm pretty sure I went through all of this and done individual ones. I just don't quite remember which ones I set because it was many, many years ago. But yeah, Hey Ya by Outcast was the default one. The Evil Laugh, I think, may have been the SMS tone. I recall that being somewhere as a default one. Could actually check and do a factory reset on one of these to see what happens. We might do that, actually, because we've still got some options left within settings. Keypad beeps. Oh. Oh god. I never had that on. Fun? I had this on though. I remember having that on. Wow. Yeah, let's leave it inactive. Oh, there's the voice record there. Oh, this is where I could tell myself that I'm an idiot. Um, this is the voice recorder. Let's try and spell my name on here. S M O R R E Z. Small as can spell. Now, if I go back to sounds, ringtones, if I go to s'mores, who would have thunk that I'd have. Oh, this is where I could tell myself that I'm an idiot. Um, this is the voice recorder. Self explanatory. Display wallpapers. Now, these wallpapers I don't quite remember. So we've got Arrow, Beach. Yeah. Someone falling to their death with a, uh, uh, oh, bungee. Okay, yep, that does make sense, yes. Butterfly. Somewhere? Somewhere. Canyon. Oh, I can, that's Canyon. All right, fair enough then, Canyon. Uh, pepper. Chili. Chili pepper. Red hot chili peppers. Chili. See? Got there in the end. Uh, shooting star. Comet. Uh, sand. Kinetic sand. Desert. There we go. Is that default? Or is this an image? No, that's that's actually that's actually a default um image. This doggo right there, and it's so blurry. But they tried. They tried. Uh, feathers, feathers there. Droplet of water, which, yeah, drop. Oh, the flowers, pretty. Two dudes looking at a floating soccer ball. Football, of course, yes. Mountains, view. I don't know. Hills, mountain. Present, gift. Christmas. Pass oh parcel. Yeah, parcel. That makes sense. Oh, I can't remember the name of the bird. Parakeet. Parrot. I'm an idiot. Oh, and now we go through all of the images that I took, which we can jump through them very quickly. Roses. The sky. That's a pretty nice one. I think I had that as uh, one of my wallpapers at one point. I used mainly the um, the skate wallpapers that I downloaded from Google on this as my wallpapers, like Element, America, Circa, all that sort of stuff. Pool. Swim. Swimmer. Swimming. Swimming pool. Okay. <laughs> Tramp stamp. Tramp stamp. Tattoo. Oh man, no, nah, it's it's not a it's not a two thousands phone without a tramp stamp being on there. <laughs> uh, whirlpool. I'm assuming that's a whirlpool. If it is, I oh, know it's a whirl. Where's your where's your whirly? Um, back to Arrow. Quite a few wallpapers that you get to choose from, which is kind of cool. Vodafone Live. That's not the phone that that this 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 is like a demo i'm pretty sure they had this in store playing this i believe i could be wrong but they also had dummy phones of this too what's red there, there you go that's red 
Cool. Desert? Oh. 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 That's nice. That's screensavers. Camera is just all the settings that I've been through beforehand. Languages, I could change it to several different languages if I wanted to, but I never needed to. Calls, all the usual stuff in there, which we can't do much with. Security, you could do keypad locking, pin number, phone code, confidentiality, activation. I guess that's just like a pin lock or something like that for stuff. Networks, GPRS, preferred. Network type, self-explanatory. Others, energy saving, eco mode, complete, partial, deactivate. And backlight, you can have full backlight, deactivate or screen only. Which, oh yeah, I haven't even shown the keypad lights either. That's what they look like. They're actually pretty bright, to be honest. Even though it doesn't really look like it, they are pretty bright. And car kit as well, you could connect this up to your car. So there was actually an accessory for this. I don't think this had USB though. Obviously that could be used for accessories and stuff. I don't think this came with earphones. I'm pretty sure it didn't. Yeah, you could have had that if you wanted to. Remember the days where hands-free things for your mobile phone were replaced where you'd have a cable coming out of your phone, you know, a pair of earphones connected to it and you'd have a little button on there to answer calls. Now it's all just wireless stuff. Technology, man, technology. Date and time is uh, all correct there. Daylight savings is coming up soon. So nothing else there. Connectivity, infrared and serial speed. This has a serial port? Okay then. Menu hotline. Tests LCD. I don't remember this. I don't remember this at all. Oh, that vibration motor. Jesus. Application? Version. JJ3 Blackjack. It's not Blackjack. Battery status? 4.03 volts. Uh, PROM? Oh, PROM. PROM, but yep, IMEI there. SIM lock? Nah, we don't want to put a password there. And we're back to sounds. And that's everything. You know, I spent like 40 minutes talking about the device before I powered it on and then got to show you all, all the stuff that's on this. And there's honestly not too much that is going on with this. But for me back in 2006 though, this was advanced. I had a camera, I had an infrared port. I had access to the internet via one click there. That's it, bring up the internet and bam, off I went. Although I only done it like two or three times because yeah, it would just eat up the credit that you put on this. You'd put a $20 recharge on, be gone in like two seconds. These little diamond keys can't be customized for Canberra and Vodafone. They're just stuck there. There are some shortcut keys for putting it on silent. And I think you could have done speed dial with one of these too, but I can't quite remember. It was a huge improvement from the Alcatel One Touch 332. It was such a big improvement and I loved this, but it was just unfortunate that yeah, the first few weeks that I had it, that I was so happy that I had a camera and all that sort of stuff. And then I go up to the Northern Territory and I walk through water and well, see you later. I honestly don't know what I did with it. Wish I could have installed a Java game, but it would have been, you had to download the Java game onto the device. I can't just send it over to it, but at least you got to see infrared working and the method I used to get the photos and videos from this onto my PC to then show you all. That was a process, but I did it. One thing that I didn't actually find was factory reset, unless it's in security, confidentiality, operator, phone code. I have no idea. I don't think there is one. Unless I go to storage or something, I'm not too sure how to factory reset it then. What a nostalgic trip this has been for me anyways, looking back at this device and yeah, this was the charger's path broken. That's okay. Uh, looking back over this, a lot of memories with this using this. I just wish I found that sock cover. It's in my garage somewhere. It was so goofy. That's probably why I got picked on because I had this fucking case that said x-rated on it but at least i have the original boxes which it's better than not having anything that was from the time that i originally had this but yeah i now have these other ones in my collection but i've only got yeah one battery that does work kind of well this has been on my to-do list for a long long time but it was a matter of getting around to doing it and yeah because of my schedule being mixed up and i was meant to do the calculator but that didn't work and so i've had to just go okay let's do something else for this week and this is what i thought of i'm lucky that i've done it in case the battery does get even more swollen than it is and then i wouldn't be able to show it again because i got no idea where i'd be able to get another battery for one of these things the sage and my x7 it's a pretty cool device and honestly if you look up sage on gsm arena they have some really oddball designs and I do have a few other Sagem devices but this is the one that meant the world to me for the time that I used it anyways. So after having the two phones and using them for about a year I'd say I then got the Motorola Sliver L6. I don't quite remember getting that in 2006 though. I think it was 2007. I'm looking at my mode profile and I've put 2006 to 2006. I'm not exactly sure if I got it in 2006 or not. Maybe early 2007 and I had it for a while but that's something that I kind of 
of want to take a look at because that had Bluetooth and that was the first. I got another story for that one too. The first ever song that I got sent to me via Bluetooth. If anyone wants to take a guess of what that could be, uh, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. But otherwise, I might take a look at that in another year. <laughs> I can't believe time's flown so quickly. I really do want to look back over my old devices. The Motorola, it's probably silver, but I call it Sliver. Sliver L6. It was That was a good phone. And then the LG U8 180. No, I had the LG U8 360. Not the LG U8 180. What am I doing there? Then I had the Nokia 6288 and then the N95. And then the rest is sort of just really the usual. But looking at the old retro stuff really does bring me back. Because, yeah, times were simpler. Times were a lot easygoing. And phones were very less sophisticated than they are nowadays. And... Well, this is what they looked like. Jumping from this to the Motorola, that was another big increase there. I actually have a video that became a little bit of a meme between me and a friend of mine that I filmed with that Motorola. So thinking about it, I actually might take a look at it. I'll try and do it by the end of this year. Um, I'll put it on my to-do list because I've got plenty of them. I don't have my original, but I've got plenty of them, but I've got the original box. So I'd be happy to showcase what they can do. And I've got like eight megabytes of memory with it too. So I'd be able to do a little bit more than what I was able to do with this. But yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any other big memories that I had with this device and I'm pretty sure I've told you all of the most iconic moments from using this device. If I can't remember anything else about this phone then I think that's going to do it for this one. Taking a look at my Sagem My X7 that's not my original one but it's, it's fine. Why not have three and then this one comes into the equation and then I've got a couple of other different My X models. Seriously cool looking design. You can't deny that. It does look really cool. Let's switch our buddy off. Goodbye. Bye. And that's it. So you folks are going to have to let me know down in the comments below if you've used a Sagem device before. I think some folks in Europe probably know Sagem a lot more than what we would here. So if you've used a Sagem device, feel free to let me know. Not the newer Sagem stuff, old Sagem stuff like this. See if you remember the whole video compression thing and the visualize and all that sort of stuff. It'd just be really interesting to hear if any of you folks have experienced using one of those devices before. But I guess that means that you've made it to the end of this video. You've probably had this on in the background listening to me ramble and waffle on. So if you've made it to the end, with me rambling and waffling on. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate you. But if you had to skip through this one, that's completely understandable. You don't have to sit here and watch an hour of me just talking and rambling about silly memories of the second mobile phone that I ever had. But people love the rambling and that's why these sorts of videos exist for the people that just want to just chill and listen to me just talk and just waffle on about a phone. I don't have to necessarily review it, but more just talking about it and just going over what made this such a special and unique device to me. Only because I killed one and the other one, well, I then babied it for that year. I'm starting to lose my voice as well, by the way, because I've just been talking non-stop about this, but my god, it's been fun going over this. It really makes me want to take a look at the Motorola now. But I have some other things to do in the meantime. I'm going to be taking my break in October, so got many things to do. Yeah, I hope you've all enjoyed this one. I hope you've learned something, got some entertainment out of this, or just had a casual fun time just sitting back just chilling with me. It's been a while since I've done a retrospective of a phone so it was really good to look back over this and get reacquainted with it from me being 13 to now 31 using that again. That's wow. Now that I feel really old I'm gonna leave it here. Thank you so much everyone for watching. I really 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 do appreciate it. I hope you got a kick out of this one. Feel free to let me know what you thought of this down in the comments below. If this was your cup of tea or if this wasn't your cup of tea. It's completely fine whichever way. Anyways everyone I'm super super tired and yeah I'm losing my voice so I shall leave with my parting words. Please remember to take care stay safe be good people and also keep being awesome and I'll see you all in the next video which I've kind of forgotten my schedule at the moment now because of the Android calculator kind of Yep, I'll work it out. Until the next time I see you all, take care of yourself. Keep being awesome, as I said, and I'll see you soon, hopefully. I apologize for this video being really all over the place. I had no idea going into this what it would be like. I just literally had the camera filming while I just went through this to just bring back nostalgic memories for me. This may not have been interesting, but hopefully there's people out there that did think this is interesting. Maybe also let me know what the second device you ever used was as well. I'm asking a lot of questions. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go now. Take care. I'll see you next time. I bumped the tripod, but that's okay. All right, I'm going now. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.